Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're talking about PS2, PS4, Zeus, and more. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about PlayStation 2 emulation with PCSX2. If you like Final Fantasy X, there's an update here that may be of interest. As of version 1.7.4680, there's some fixes to FMVs. The official fix is move VSync flush to caller, and the rationale says it fixes FMV flicker in Final Fantasy X. So if you're watching cutscenes and you are getting some flickering, hopefully that is now fixed. Next up, we're talking about NSF Play and NSF Player. And NSF Play just got a brand new update to version 2.6. Now the previous release of NSF Play was back in October of last year. And since then, we've got a whole bunch of bug fixes and some brand new features. For example, it now supports Unicode file names. And you can also resize the info window. NSF Play is for Windows, but it is free and open source, and I'll drop a link to it in the description below. Next up, we're talking about Nintendo Switch emulation on Android with Yuzu. And Yuzu just got a surprise update. So we knew some of this stuff was coming down from the early access version, but we didn't know all of it. So with the latest mainline build here, it adds L3 and R3 buttons to the gamepad input overlay. It fixes Mesa turnip drivers on some problematic Snapdragon 800 series devices. It improves accuracy of the minimum RAM warning. And this is the big one. It includes the latest changes from Upstream Yuzu, which is the PC version, including some major performance improvements. So yeah, if you haven't updated Yuzu in a while, it may be worth picking up the latest and greatest version right from Google Play. I'll drop a link in the description below. And speaking about free and open source, next up we're talking about the Playdate, and it appears that the Playdate is getting a camera, kind of. It will be a free and open source project. Unfortunately, it won't be for sale. Now to clarify, by free, I mean the information, not necessarily the parts you need to assemble this thing. And this is all thanks to Tom Granger. I'll drop a link to this tweet in the description below and feel free to check it out. And speaking about Twitter, check out this tweet. If you're a fan of Duke Nukem Manhattan Project, you may be glad to know that it's been given a sort of remaster. And this is thanks to Zoom Platform and a joint effort with some community members. So if we take a look at the change log, there is a lot here. We've got more language support. They've added classic and enhanced modes. They've improved the launcher with new features. Uzi Machine Gun is now included. Support for loading mods from the launcher. And they've even got UI and FOV support for 16x9 widescreen resolutions and 21x9. They say here a tremendous special thanks to our friends Green and Zombie for making this happen, who I'm assuming are the community members. As always, I'll drop a link to it in the description below and feel free to check it out. Next up, we're talking about some pretty big gaming history preservation thanks to Noclip. They spent over a year collecting a whole bunch of videotapes and they say they found and saved 10 years of lost video game history. Some of this stuff people have never seen. Some of it has been lost over time and well, I guess is now found. A lot of this or all of this is being uploaded right to their internet archive page and I'll drop a link to this YouTube video in the description below and I do recommend checking it out. Next up we're talking about some new hardware and the Orange Pi 03 has just dropped. This one is the 4GB of RAM version. You can get less if you want, and it's a little bit cheaper, but I mean, 29 bucks overall for this is pretty darn cheap. It does feature a Mali G31 GPU, and interestingly enough, the cheapest version here is pretty darn cheap as well, 18 bucks overall, which gets you 1GB of RAM. Next up, we're talking about PS4 emulation with RPCSX. We talked about this one a little while back when it was announced that it was being worked on by people who developed RPCS3, the PS3 emulator. Anyways here, this one is still extremely early on in development, but if you are interested in it, Brutal Sam already has a tutorial on how to get up and started with it, and I'll drop a link to it in the description below. It's not necessarily an easy process. And speaking about PS4, next up we're talking about a game that was released on the PS4, but also a whole bunch of other platforms. We're talking about Skullgirls, and Skullgirls got a recent update to change some of the art assets. And a lot of people aren't happy about it. 
In fact, if you take a look on Steam, the recent reviews are mostly negative. Interestingly enough, the mostly negative is better than the overwhelmingly negative reviews it had just recently. So I guess people are starting to like it a little bit more. Next up, we're talking about the Asus ROG Ally. And the ROG Ally just got an update that may make it a little bit louder in turbo mode. So the first update here is for a pretty big bug fix. It resolved an issue that caused the ROG Ally to be stuck at the boot up loading screen when the users configured a password in BIOS mode. And here's the fan stuff. It modified the Ally's fan curve from 30 dBA to 35 dBA in turbo mode when plugged in, and from 25 dBA to 30 dBA in turbo mode when using the battery. It also changed the minimum fan speed in manual mode when the device hits a certain temperature. So on one hand, you may get some extra performance because the fans are working harder to keep the device cooler. And on the other hand, you may be annoyed that it's a little bit louder. And if it's too loud for you, you can use the brand new Alt F4 feature to really help things out. And speaking about hardware, next up we're talking about the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus and Pocket Flip. Both of these are getting updates. For the 3 Plus, it says updated the PMU driver to enhance system performance and stability. And for the Flip, it got a ton of updates here. It fixed battery charging curve where the battery drains too quickly after 20% capacity. On top of that, it updates the Hall joystick driver to improve functionality and performance. So the joysticks are going to get a little bit better. Battery life will hopefully be a little bit better. As for emulation performance, I wouldn't really expect anything earth shattering here, or anything much at all. And last up here, we're talking about Zorro.to, and apparently, according to Torrent Freak, the world's largest pirate site was suddenly acquired and rebranded. Honestly, here, I don't know a whole lot about this acquisition and changing the name from Zorro.to to AnyWatch.to. I'm assuming, though, it's probably going to change again as people try to take the site down. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.